Drawing the daisy cluster is relatively complex. The flowers face in multiple directions, the peduncles come off the main stem in radial fashion, and at the base of each peduncle is a leaf. In addition, the flowers open from the bottom up so that the buds come from the lower end of the stem. To make it easier to draw this flower in its parts, start by separating it into sections, stem and peduncles, then flowers from different vantage points. In this way, various decisions can be made for the purpose of creating an illustration that 1. clearly indicates the stem structure, 2. how the peduncles and leaves are attached, and finally, 3. several views of the flowers so that their structure is highlighted. Now it's time to start drawing our plant. I've taken photographs of those flowers that are on the plant itself and measured to scale before I printed them out. I'm using photographs here to make the procedure of measuring a little easier to see. I have a side view, I have two front views, and I have a rear view. When I did the rear view, I measured off the plant, so this rear view looks a little smaller because it's going to be farther back in space. I'm going to start with this profile view, and the reason we do these different views is so that you can see the actual structure of the flower from different perspectives. These, as I said, have been drawn to scale, so this geometric area, or what I like to call the real estate, you can see fits the flower pretty accurately. What you'll be doing is you'll be measuring from the widest tip to widest tip for the width. Put that down and mark it. And then you're going to do the height from the tallest point to the lowest point, and that, that is going to be our height. draw in that geometric form and we know that that is the space that this daisy would take up in space. Now the next thing we want to do is find the center point of this stem on the receptacle. I'm going to measure from this petal here to the center point of the flower. So this is my the height at which this comes in and then I'm going to measure from this point in to the center again. And that tells me that I have to be somewhere in here. So this is the center of my peduncle. Now I want to gauge the angle of position. So I'm going to start with the flower in this direction and run that line so that I'm pretty much matching that angle of perspective and then the peduncle will come in more or less at 90 degrees from that intersection but we want it to be slightly curved because it is a natural form so we're just going to put a little bit of direction on that. The next thing we need to do is analyze the size of this ellipse because from this this angle here, you can see that this flower, we don't see anything of the, the cone in the center. We just see the radial petals. So we're going to come up a little bit because you can see that these brats have a little bit of height to them. But the petals themselves come down below that. So we're going to draw an ellipse that pretty much represents the shape of this flower in its entirety. If we were going to put an imaginary line around this, that's what we would end up with. Here is our position for our flower, and now we can decide and draw in where the petals are. First of all, you want to decide on a 12, 3, 6, and 9 position for petals that are going to be your locating petals. So I'm going to take, even though this one's a little off, I'm going to make this my 12, I'm going to make this my 3, I'm going to make this my 6, and I'm going to make this one my 9. If I go from the center out to this petal, it's almost vertical, but not quite, so I'm going to put slight angle on it. This one is going to be at a little bit of an angle, 
but it's the one that touches the, the real estate. This one is going to be my nine o'clock, which is almost parallel to the picture plane. So I'm going to put that one in here somewhere. So we have one, two, and now with a six o'clock is going to be the trickiest. But if I put a, a pencil on the angle of it, you can see that it's almost, um, it's almost vertical, but not quite. So how are we going to work this out? We're going to draw these petals first. Even though there are things in front of them, we're going to draw them in as though we can see where they would come in in the center of the flower. So this one here is really a very strong angle and it looks like if, if I could see it, it would fold a little. This six o'clock petal doesn't look like a long petal, even though we know that it is, but because it's foreshortened, you need to think of it not as a petal, but as a shape. And this is almost a triangle. So from this point here, which is just beyond the center of the stem, I'm going to draw in a shortened triangle And think of it as a shape and don't worry about whether it looks like a petal or not. It's going to look like a petal when we're done. So next, we're going to put in this nine o'clock shape, which comes to this peduncle. And remember, this peduncle has some width, so this side of the petal will only come about that far in. So now we have our shapes and we know where to put everything else. And you can measure if you want to, but you really don't have to. I mean, you can kind of tell where things are going to go. So between this one and this one, we know we have this number of petals. This one is overlapping, so this one would probably come in here like so. And notice the amount of distance you have between the tip of this and the tip of the other one, and that'll tell you how far to draw this particular petal and then we can start putting in these others that are part of that particular quadrant. You just have to look and see where they fall in relation to one another. Now this one is your tallest and it comes in from here. You can see it comes in about this much. So we're going to draw that in and this one has to be moved a little. And if you're not absolutely perfect, you know, you, you don't have to worry about it too much because these petals have a tendency to move around, so you can be a little bit flexible with it. But you need to be fairly accurate. Now then I'm going to the next one I'm going to do is this one here and this one here. And then from here we have two that come out this way. And you can see right now I'm still sketching. This is very, very loose so that we get the feeling for what's going on. So if you look at things and how they are related to one another, it helps you to see where to put things. Look at, for instance, this shape. How does it relate to this shape here? How much distance is there? And you can pretty much eyeball that information and, and get it pretty close to accurate. And this is how I'm going to start for each one of these flowers. So this one is ready to be refined. So you're going to take another piece of tracing paper and put it underneath so that you don't lose your basic 
drawing and now you have to look at this very carefully make sure your pencil is very sharp and really start to look at these contours now you might be better off looking at it with a real life specimen but really look at the contours of what it is that you want to record As you're doing this, you want to make sure that you are really um, being very careful about what you see and making any adjustments to your original sketch. It's a matter of taking what you've got and using it as a basis for what you ultimately need. So here we have a drawing that's in pretty good shape and that will tell me what I'm going to be using for my final composite composition. So I'm going to do this with every single one of these then we'll start to do the stem. At this point I have all of my rough sketches done and now I can go to finishing off each one of these on the final tracing and you may have to do more than one if you're really careful you can do these in two steps I'm just about finished with this drawing I just have to finish up the brats which I want to draw very carefully so that they are accurate and then you are ready to go to the stem portion of this project Now these stems obviously will be much longer, but you'll be attaching them to your stem drawing. So there we have all our line drawings ready to go.